all, thank you very much indeed, Peter, for the welcome and also for the invitation. Although I must say, it's a little strange because uh, this, of course, is my base when I'm in Northern Ireland. So it's uh, rather nice to be invited to something here in the building where I work, at least for the time being anyway. Uh, as you say, uh, Peter, we are here today in a very special room, um, a room where the Good Friday Agreement was signed a little more than 10 years ago and on a very special day. International Human Rights Day is a highly significant day for all of us and today of course the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission is handing over its statutory advice on a potential human rights bill for Northern Ireland. A commitment to the safeguarding of human rights of course was a fundamental part of the Good Friday Agreement and was integral to the Northern Ireland Act that followed and indeed an act that created the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission. And even though government has uh, from time to time been amongst those who've been criticised by the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission, I want today to place on record my appreciation for the important work that you do, Monica, uh, with your colleagues. Protecting human rights, promoting a human rights culture is challenging and painstaking work. It of course arouses passions and it creates differences of opinions and judgment between people with honestly held views. But it's vital that every citizen knows what their human rights are and that they will be protected. Whatever their background, whatever their social class, whatever their ethnic group, whatever their community identity. It's important too that together we articulate our shared values and our common humanity. Government has been deeply committed to the development of a framework for human rights. And Northern Ireland, of course, already benefits from the Human Rights Act, which was passed in 2000. But human rights are not just a sterile set of, set of statements that gather dust on a shelf. And human rights culture is more than a list of rules. It should be real and active, and it should be reflected in mutual respect from the very top to the very bottom of society. The question that the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission has addressed in today's report is whether there are any additional protections that go beyond existing legislation and reflect the particular circumstances of Northern Ireland. This is a task that has its roots, as I said, in the Good Friday Agreement, a task that was taken forward by the Bill of Rights Forum and that has now taken the shape of statutory advice to government. And we should remember that the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission hasn't produced this report just because it thinks it's a good idea, although I would assume that it does think it's a good idea. It's produced it because it's mandated in law to do so. And I genuinely want to thank you, Monica, and your colleagues uh, for all the work, the tireless efforts that you've made. I assume just as you thought there was no time left to do this kind of thing, you had to find the time, and you did. And I'm very grateful to you for doing so. Government will now consider the report and its recommendations. We are, as you know, committed to consult, although the format and the timescale of that consultation is yet to be determined once we've given the report very careful consideration. So this is not the end of the process, but it is an important staging post. All of us are deeply aware of its significance for all parties in Northern Ireland. And I'm grateful to everyone who has played their part along the way. Thank you very much indeed.